So what are algorithms? How are they used? What are the possible implications of their use both for the individual and also for society as a whole? On the basic level, an algorithm is just a set of rules, procedures or steps that are followed to get to an end result. This could be, for instance, checking the colour, size and shape of various fruit. By following the steps relating to the shape, size and colour of that particular fruit, fruit then could be sorted into apples, bananas, oranges, pears, whatever other fruit are available. The steps in this procedure would be the algorithm for identifying which fruit was which. The more steps in the algorithm, in general, the more accurate the end result will actually be in the sorting process. Algorithms are fundamental to how computer programs work, especially in processing data and carrying out instructions in a predetermined order. However, algorithms do actually have their roots in mathematics going back well over a thousand years. Computers now are no longer just using algorithms for carrying out the fundamental tasks of their operation. Instead, they're now being used to predict human responses and attitudes. One of the obvious uses of algorithms is being able to predict what things you might want to watch in the future. This shows some of their usefulness, but also highlights some of the problems with the uses of algorithms in human activity and also the future problems. So there are lots of algorithms out there that attempt to predict what you'd want to watch, whether these are online videos, streaming services, cable TV, or some other format. The algorithm analyzes what you've previously watched and attempts to predict what shows, films, or videos you'd probably want to watch in the future. The problem here is that humans are extremely complicated beings and the choices we make are based upon a very large number of factors and sometimes can just plainly be totally irrational. So the algorithm may pick out that you've watched Johnny Depp in the Pirates of Caribbean films. It may start to select more Johnny Depp films because it thinks you want to watch these films. However, you might have been watching films because you like pirate films, ghost films or comedy films. You might even be watching them for some of the other actors in the films. Alternatively, having seen Johnny Depp in so many films, you're now bored of him and want to watch something else. Unless the algorithm has more information on which to base its choice of your future viewing, the outcome may be less than satisfactory. As you watch more and more shows, the database of your preferences grows larger. In theory, the suggestions the algorithm makes should actually improve. However, the algorithm just doesn't appear out of thin air. It has to be written. You said that writing the instructions has to make some assumptions about what your actions mean. As soon as you start to make assumptions, you make miscalculations, especially concerning things as complicated as human beings. Now, the person writing the algorithm for TV precedences has no true idea why you were watching a particular show. What friends might have been there? Were you even in the room? Had you fallen asleep? Or any number of other factors may have led you to watch that particular show. All they have to operate on is their best guess for the factor or factors that led you to choose that particular option at that particular time. The best guess, however, especially based upon limited data, could leave out large sections of possible viewing options that would perfectly suit your desires. This narrowing down of options, which is the advantage of an algorithm, is also part of the problem. Our social networking sites, news feeds, music sites, and many more can all be building up a profile of your likes, dislikes, and interactions, and feeding it through an algorithm it, what it thinks is the most suitable or interesting new events for you to view. Now, this can also mean this form of computer editing, you start to miss out on things, and this can have some major consequences. For instance, if you don't interact with a particular friend's posts on social network site, the algorithm can think you're not interested in what they're saying, so it won't show you these posts anymore, and you may actually then start to lose touch with that particular friend. Alternatively, if you use several things for a newsfeed which represent one side of a particular political, political hot topic, the algorithm may think you're not interested in your alternative point of view. In the future, only show you those items which reinforce that world view, rather than giving you both sides of the topic in question. This may lead you then to think that the vast majority of people also share your world view on this topic, because the only stories you'll see are those which support your particular world view. Now, whilst the uses of these algorithms can be an issue, if you're aware of them, the impact can actually be minimised. 
However, there's some more rather disturbing uses that algorithms can possibly be put to if they have enough information to work with. Now, if a political party, pressure group, or even a commercial company can use a profile of your likes and dislikes, can be very selective about what issues they show you. It could potentially target you by prominently showing those issues where their agenda matches yours, or hide, minimize those topics where your views disagrees with theirs. This manipulation of people by the use of their computer footprint is a real possibility. In many countries around the world, the legislation is actually lagging behind the use or abuse of an individual's attitudes and preferences. Algorithms are fundamental to the function of modern society. The very usefulness and flexibility does mean they can start to be, be open to abused by people who don't have the best interests of you at their heart.